Good afternoon and welcome to Story and Transformation in uh, Digital World. My name is Daniel Knoll. And I'm Audrey Scott. And we are the folks behind uncorneredmarket.com. We've been traveling around the world for close to about 10 years now or so. I think uh, we're somewhere over 90 countries. Audrey and I wear multiple hats. So we are bloggers, writers, photographers, uh, also marketing consultants uh, and advisors, and maybe speakers. Well, we'll let you guys decide about that. But. So let's take a look at where we're going to be going today. So we'd first like to let you know if you hear something interesting today, feel free to go ahead and tweet it or share it on Twitter. Our handle is at umarket. You can go ahead and use the hashtag ITB Berlin. Really quickly, we'll be covering consumer travel trends. We'll take a look at transformational travel and what that really means. Try to unpack that. We'll then address storytelling, the elephant in the room, authenticity, the idea of listening or mining online conversation, and then if we have time, we'll go ahead and address your questions. So I have a question for all of you. By a show of hands, how many of you have traveled? I still, wait, there's a couple I th hands I think there's a that few I haven't hands seen. That aren't up all right, yet. so good. It seems like we are in the right place. Now, the next question I would like to ask you is how many of you have been changed by a travel experience? I really hope, really, really hope <laughs> by a share of hands it's the same number. Good. What I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to put down any of your devices, pens, pencils, and I'd like you to go ahead and close your eyes. Trust me. <laughs> no one's going to steal your stuff. Don't worry. We're not going to come and take anything. Your smartphones so, are safe. Go ahead. Eyes closed. I'd mm -hmm. like you to take a nice big deep breath in. Inhale. And then exhale. It's been a long conference. We still have a long way to go. Inhale again and exhale. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to focus on, for all of you who raised your hands, that travel experience that changed you. Maybe it was the last one that you took. Maybe it was your very first travel experience. Maybe it was your most memorable travel experience. And as you lock onto that experience, I'd like you to think about where you were, perhaps who you were with. What brought you there? Why were you there? And as you think more deeply about that experience, think about the various senses that were involved. What are you seeing? What are you hearing? Are there any smells involved? If there was food involved, what were the flavors like? What were you feeling? The next thing I'd like you to think about is if this experience changed you, what was it about that experience that changed you? And when you returned home, how did you reflect on that? What did it look like? What about you, by way of that travel experience, had changed? Sit with that experience a little while longer, and now you can go ahead and open your eyes. And don't worry, everything is safe, just like it was a few minutes ago. Hopefully no one lost anything. Hopefully that was a nice experience for all of you. One of the reasons that we do this is we just like to grind our, ground ourselves psychologically in what we're going to be talking about. And many of us got into the travel industry because we had a passion for travel. And when we work in the industry, sometimes we get we get distracted by itineraries and projects and spreadsheets and accounting and everything and we actually lose touch with that passion and we lose touch with what it's like to be an actual traveler, an actual consumer, the people that you're serving, the people that you're working with. So when we're talking about transformational travel, this is what we're talking about, the power that travel has to change us, to come back different, to learn a bit more about the world. So. We've been doing this here on the e-travel stage in the e-travel area for the last five or six years, and we typically ask this question, but I'd like to ask it again because it's interesting to see how it evolves. What business are you in? Feel free to go ahead and shout out. Travel, travel? business? Yeah? All right, number one. <laughs> maybe, maybe some of you are in the tourism business. 
experience business. This is good. About four <laughs> or five years ago when we asked this question, no one said experience business. Now we're saying experience business. For the purposes of this discussion, I'm going to suggest two additional businesses that you ought to be in, in travel and as travel marketers. First, the differentiation business. What is it that makes you different, particularly relative to another product that looks perhaps a little bit similar? And then the focus of today is we should really all be considering ourselves in the change or transformation business. Which, for whatever reason, is not coming up. Oh, there it goes. But we're all good. <laughs> So one of the reasons why we're talking about transformational travel is because it's kind of the new buzzword. It's kind of the new trend that everyone is talking about. I feel like between December and March, I read all different articles of, you know, it used to be experiential travel. Now it's transformational travel. And what does that mean? And one of the reasons for this is because travel is evolving. Think about it. Think about that experience you thought about earlier. Maybe it was 10 years ago. Maybe it was five years ago. How we're traveling and the tools that we have and our goals and our demands are evolving and they're changing. So it used to be that you know, travel was maybe a little bit more passive, observing. We would go and see a cultural show, or we would go and see a dance show. Now people want to learn how to do that dance. Now people want to get their hands dirty. They want to get engaged. They want to get involved. The other thing is it used to be that everyone was focused on checking off as many things on their list. Like, I went and saw 10 things in Paris today. Now people are more focused on going deeper. They want to have maybe two or three experiences that really gets them in touch with the culture, with the people, something that's a little bit more immersive in depth. Another thing is it used to be very standardized. We'd see like a list of options and people were okay with that. Now people want something that's personalized. They want a company to know their interests. They want a company to know, you know, I'm going to think ahead for you. I think you're going to go to Botswana and I think you're really going to enjoy this experience out on the Okavanga Delta, almost to prompt them. They want something that's more personalized. And another thing is travel, we used to think of it kind of like consumption. You know, we went and we take a trip. We went and we consume things on that trip. And now travelers and consumers are more interested in giving back. They're more interested in leaving a positive impact in the communities that they're traveling to. And they also want to make sure that what they're doing and the companies that they choose are helping them do that. There's a reason why volunteering and volunteerism is a $3 billion industry. There's obviously demand, especially for young people, on their vacations, on their trips, to do more than just consume a bunch of experience. They want to make sure that what they're doing actually gives back and also does something positive for the places that they're traveling. And it all makes sense why this is. Think about it. Travel has become democratized. So that means more of us are traveling and more of us are traveling to more places. Think about it. 20 years ago, it would kind of be hard to find very many people out there who had traveled to 20 or 30 countries. And nowadays, everyone is traveling to dozens of countries and, looking, and is looking at traveling to 50 or more countries. I actually spoke to a woman last night and her eight-year-old child had been to 29 countries. So imagine what a demanding traveler consumer she's going to be when she she gets to 18, 20, 25 years old. So, you know, this is the way things are going. So I, I like this quote from the Future of Travel 2020 from Skift. The thing that I like about it is it really captures the nature of where travel has evolved. We are essentially in the self-help or the personal growth business. <laughs> this is about deeper experiences. This is about personalization. It's about connecting inspiration, bringing that consumer to the point of purchase through this entire process. And so what we're going to be looking at today in the next several minutes that we have together with you is we'd like to introduce a couple of concepts and constructs that you might use regardless of what social media or digital channels you happen to be on. We want to take a look at some of the behaviors behind what we're seeing. And so when we look at transformational travel, the question is what is it ultimately about? Because it can run the risk of being a buzzword. But at the, very, at the very basic, transformational travel is about the traveler going, undertaking an experience, and then feeling changed or transformed, or having a shift in mindset or a shift in perspective. And the question is, how do we communicate that as travel marketers as a potential of our product or experience that we're offering? One of the first constructs that we would like to offer is the idea of connection. 
And what I'd like to do is break down how that happens. I like this quote, Seth Godin, master marketer, now the things we pay extra for are connection. We should pay attention to this. People want to pay money for this. So how do we communicate it from a marketing perspective, and then how do we embed it in our products and experiences? We offer the three levels of connection. The first level is the idea of connection to place. This could be place, destination, or environment. And the various sorts of sub-themes that we're seeing is this idea of possibly disconnecting to reconnect, right? Sort of digital detox kind of idea. Connection to place. The next idea, or next element, is connection to people. Perhaps the most underserved dimension of travel is people and humanity. And it makes sense that now a lot more experience providers are looking to highlight the role of people in those uh, experiences. And this, this experience is from Jordan. And we spent about two weeks there a few years ago. And we went and saw Petra. We went and saw Wadi Rum. You know, we saw the stars at night. And all of that was incredible really great memories. But often when people ask me about Jordan, I come back to the three hours I spent with these women um, in a disadvantaged community near the Dead Sea, and just how I felt with them, how I learned from them, how they were sharing of kind of their own culture and their community. And so it really is this kind of, it stays with you, the stories with people. And especially now, given the discourse and where things are going, I think this connection to people, there's a real opportunity in travel to connect people together and to learn from each other, to help us let have less other in the world and have more understanding of our similarities. The interesting thing about these elements of connection, we use these on our social media channels as well. They can be used individually in a, in a single story panel, or they can be used in a multi-panel and combined together. It doesn't matter whether you happen to be on Facebook Live, in video, on Snapchat, or on Instagram. The final element of connection is this idea of connection to ourselves. We are essentially, as human beings, in the process of figuring out why we are here and what our purpose is on Earth, and the travel experience helps us do that. So you think about mindful travel, the idea of going through an experience and not only being more grateful for having had the opportunity to be in that destination or in that experience, but then returning home and thinking, how did that change me? What am I more grateful for at home because I undertook that travel experience? And the idea of the path. What was the challenge? What were the set of accomplishments that were involved in that? So three levels of connection. And just connected to this last one, there's a reason why when people think of travel more and more, they're thinking about pushing boundaries. We, use, we hear the phrase, go outside your comfort zone, almost a little bit too much. But it's this idea that you know, people, when they travel, they're looking to get something different than what they have in their ordinary life, to perhaps push them a little bit more than they ordinary would, ordinarily would be pushed. And so how does this, you know, this, we've talked a little bit about transformational travel. We're going to talk a little bit more about storytelling. But the reason why we wanted to connect these two together is because we actually feel that it's kind of like a perfect parallel. I mean, think about it. Transformational travel, you go into a trip and you come out different change, perhaps a different perspective. You're thinking about the world differently. You're thinking about yourself differently. You're thinking about maybe other cultures differently. And with story, that's essentially what it is. A story is a journey. Someone goes in one way, they undertake an experience, they often have some obstacles or challenges, and they come out different. They come out in a new way. And the other thing that I'd like to leave with you, maybe if there's one or two things that you leave with today, is this shift in thinking. Instead of thinking of what you do as being providers, you know, you provide a service, you provide a product, you provide an app, you provide a tour, an itinerary, think of yourselves as enablers. Think of what you're enabling your customers to do. Think about what you're enabling your travelers to do. Through what you do, you're opening up all these doors to all these different places and people and experiences. So perhaps in that shift in thinking, as you're thinking about your social media, or you're thinking about your digital marketing, maybe think about less about the functionality and think about more about what that product or service is enabling your customers and travelers to do to, again, either have that sense of change or at least put them in touch with the type of people and experiences that can offer that. And finally, story ending. Often when we think about travel stories and social media, we often have the photo of the woman at the top of the mountain or the man at the top of the mountain. If you've ever been on Instagram, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, someone's up there going, yeah. But we often don't know the story of how that person got there. What were the challenges that they went through? I know for us, when we climbed to the top of Kilimanjaro, we've got our smiley faces at the top and that's great. But the real story is about the journey getting up there. 
and the challenges that we overcame and how in the top we learned so much about ourselves, we learned so much about the people that we were with. And so again, when you're thinking about storytelling and transformational travel, it's more about the insights and the learnings that your customers are getting from the experience, from your products, rather than a list of functionality or a list of features. So one of the ideas that's going to come up often in this discussion and probably going forward is this idea of empathy. We need to take ourselves out of our own lives as travel marketers, our own minds, and put ourselves in the mind of the consumer. And one of the first things that you ought to do when you do that, instead of dumping the wheelbarrow of what's great about your product mm -hmm. over the head of your consumer, think about listening to them first and understand that it's said that the average prospective consumer deals with over 6,000 marketing and advertising messages a day. Now this particular stat comes from a couple of years ago, given all the proliferation of channels, we're probably talking 60,000 messages a day. So just the first thing to think about. But then the question is, how do we break through all of this noise? Well, that's story. And a lot of you have probably seen this, but it bears telling again because it seems like we still, that's, sometimes we still don't get it here in the travel marketing business. The reason that story is so powerful is it's because the human brain processes information more effectively and more efficiently when it's in the form of a story. So it's this idea that if I tell a story, that information can be better retained. It's the idea of selling to the consumer's heart first and enabling their brain to follow to go and make the purchase. The other thing when something is in the form of a story is it helps build trust. For those of you who are looking for authenticity, one of the pathways to authenticity is building trust, and one of the pathways to building trust is telling stories. But if you take nothing away from this slide, take number three away. It's this idea of depth of impression. Everyone today is about page views. We all love seeing the red heart and the like button. But the question is, what's actually going to bring the consumer to purchase? I love telling the story about how we told a story about climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, and then three or four years later, we get an email from someone who said, I read that story when it was initially published. I didn't have time or money to act on it then, but now I do. That's the idea of depth of impression, and what enables that is a powerful story with the elements of things like connection and humanity and place. And finally, you tell an effective story and you migrate your, your product or your experience from something that's a commodity to something that's differentiated. What makes your beach hut different than the guys next door? It's the story that you have to tell about it. Or I love, there's a study that was done, I think, two years ago by some scientists where they bought something really basic and they said, okay, we're gonna sell it on eBay. And so for half of them, they just list, you know, they gave a photo and they listed the functionality and the features of the item. And for the other one, they created a story. And the ones that had a story were sold for three times more money because there was something special or something meaningful about it. So this was a study. I don't encourage you to make up stories, but it's just to illustrate this idea that stories can make something that might look simple and add actually extra depth and something a little bit more kind of special or emotional. I like this panel for two reasons. Uh, it's the idea that story is kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. We're not born with exceptional storytelling abilities. Well, maybe some of us are and some of us aren't, but it's really about developing a skill. Also, great stories happen to those who can tell great stories. And this comes from This American Life, and one of the reasons I bring this up is people often ask, where do you get your storytelling ability and inspiration from? I listen to other podcasts and other content outside of the travel press and outside of the travel trade press because there's sort of affinity and overlap. There's lots of great podcasts out there. Podcasts like This American Life, Radio Lab, Reply All. Go and listen to those and you will see and feel and hear very effective storytelling. And it may not be about travel, but you'll be able to use the same types of techniques when you tell stories about your travel experiences. So people ask very quickly, this could be storytelling techniques. It could also really say sharing techniques. You can use these no matter what the channel. People often ask us, how do I get started? Frankly, I'll know that I need to post something on Instagram or something on Facebook and I'll ask myself, where do I get started? Think about this. Storytelling is not about the list of things on the itinerary. It's about sharing a journey. It gets back to transformation. Something has to happen and something has to change in the telling of that story. If you're stuck, focus on a character. And when you focus on a character, make sure that you give that character a name. That's how we relate to one another, as people, as people with names. We often say in storytelling, show, don't tell. I'm gonna change those words just a little bit and say, 
illustrate, don't assert. If your experience is going to change someone's life, don't just say that I, I'm going to change your life or you're going to have the experience of a lifetime. Show me exactly what the elements of that experience of a lifetime are. Use things like crux and conflict. It sounds a little bit frightening because that stuff is negative, but people want to hear for transparency and authenticity's sake, what were the challenges? What were the challenges that you overcame as a company? What are the challenges that consumers are going to face you know, in that particular travel experience? And the idea of crux is this idea of coming into an experience expecting one thing, but then coming out and having actually experienced something a little bit different that they didn't expect. But the idea is that maybe that's something a little bit better. And then finally, just like the experience exercise we did at the beginning, use multiple dimensions and senses. So if you're giving me something visual, tell me what am I hearing? What am I feeling? Are there any smells or flavors involved with that? And try to be as descriptive as possible. So how can we connect these, some of these storytelling techniques to the new brand story? And brand story has always been incredibly important, but I would make the assertion, so I am going to assert, um, I'm going to make the assertion that it's even more important than ever, because especially with millennials, they're three times more likely to be loyal to a brand and become kind of natural brand ambassadors. The flip side of that coin is it's harder to get their loyalty. A lot of millennials are skeptical. They have doubts about corporations. They trust people, but they don't necessarily trust companies and corporations. And they're looking, for brand, they're looking at brands as an extension of themselves in terms of their values, what, they're, what is important to them, almost like an extension of what they're standing for. So when you think about your brand's story, don't just say what you do, but say why you do it. What is it that's part of your experience or your company or your brand that's perhaps bigger than just the app that you're offering or perhaps the product or the service. Think about also what you're doing for perhaps the community or maybe think about it this way. Why is the world a little bit of a better place because my company is here? What is it that I'm doing that perhaps helps other people connect or perhaps connect them to new experiences, help them have these transformational experiences. So it's not just about what you do, but it's about why you do it. Another thing is, I kind of like to say that activism is the new sexy. I mean, especially now, and maybe it's because of kind of the political climate, but brands that are taking, they're not just talking about it, but they're actually taking a stand and taking action on something that, that demonstrates their brand. They're getting a lot of loyalty and a lot of followers because People, especially for millennials, they're looking for brands that they can follow as almost like a movement to say like, I'm acting in my values by supporting this brand or buying this, this product or this company. Another thing we've talked a lot about authenticity. Um, with the brand story, it's also about transparency. Usually we only like to show the pretty things. We like to show only like the final result where everything worked okay. But again, especially with millennials, they don't necessarily trust companies that much. So be a little bit transparent perhaps on some of the challenges that you're going through. If you're an NGO, we all know that it's tough working in communities and development work. Kind of what was the process and how has the values of your brand helped you get through that and get to the other side? And the other thing is a lot of times with brand stories, we think of the founder story or the employee story. Those are important, but start thinking about your customers as the, st as the characters in your brand story. Again, what is your brand enabling them to do? How are they coming out different by using your product, your service, whatever it is that you're offering? And again, with millennials especially, they're looking for this authenticity and this two-way conversation, and they want to speak with brands almost as people as opposed to corporations. So how does that work in terms of trying to show this authenticity or trying to develop this trust on digital and social media? I would say, think about the first instinct is to help. Again, people trust people, they don't trust companies. So when you're the face of your company, your face of your brand, and you're on social or you're on your digital, Make sure that your first instinct is to help. And actually, even just before we walked in, we ran into a friend, and she kind of was shaking her head, and she's like, I went to a stand, and the first thing they tried to do was sell me. They didn't even answer my question. Um, and that's actually, unfortunately, something that happens quite a lot. There's a customer, a traveler, who has a need, who has a problem, who's curious, who wants to know, and all of a sudden, they're hit with a sales pitch, or they're hit with tour art, um, or brochures, or something like that. First, try and help the person. Try and understand what it is that they need or what it is that they want. And that gets to this idea of inspiring and informing. In marketing, we often focus on the inspiration, and that's great. But if you don't provide 
actionable information or actionable advice and resource to, to help that customer go from seeing that photo of the person on top of the mountain to the information that's like, oh, I can do this too. I mean, I can't tell you how many times we write articles, and at the beginning, it's very inspiring in these really dramatic photos. And at the end, we're writing all, these, all the information to try and help other people get there. And people will respond to be like, I never thought that I could do that, but now I realize that I can. So if you're asking yourself, how do I become an authority? It's really those first two items, and to do so with a human voice. If you come away with anything from this slide, it's really the idea that actionable or practical information is the bridge between inspiration and conversion. We can't live on inspiration. We can't eat inspiration. At the end of the day, we actually have to sell product. And the bridge is inspiring first and then delivering the practical information so you can bring that customer to the point of sale and transaction so they actually buy your product. So we want to talk a little bit about listening. Empathy has obviously shown up a lot of times in this discussion. And what we want to do is suggest at all times during your discussions with potential customers on social media, potential partners, is look for objectivity. Get outside of your own head and think, what is that person on the opposite side of me looking for? And then listen. And as you listen to those various conversations on all of your social media channels, especially through your customers who are sharing, ask yourself, what is it that they're sharing? What do they believe? What are they demonstrating as most important to them? And is there an alignment between that and your own marketing and your own social media. Because if there's not, then there's a gap and you're missing an opportunity. If your customers are saying, these are the most important things over here in this experience for me, these are the most differentiating factors. It's not about the temples. It's about the lunch with the kids at the local NGO. Well, then maybe that's something to potentially incorporate into your marketing. And how much you do this? I mean, Dan was just talking about in terms of comments or perhaps feedback forms on your own social media sites. But think about it. Get maybe beyond that. If you're offering a tour to a destination or you're focusing on a, on a specific region or place, go on Instagram, go on Twitter, go on different social media and look for a hashtag or look for a place and say, okay, what are travelers sharing from that place? Is it what I'm offering? Is it the same as what I'm trying to help them do? Or, again, is there kind of misalignment? And the other thing is, which ask them questions. People always are afraid to ask people. But often travelers love talking about their experiences. So if you are on Instagram, then maybe tell, ask a question. Say, hey, you just were in Kyrgyzstan and you just did this new trek. What was your most memorable experience? And often people will tell you because they are excited and they want to share it with you. And how can you use that information to go back into perhaps your product development and also your marketing to understand, to align what matters to travelers and what means a lot to them and for what you're selling and how you're marketing it. So we'll leave you with this. And instead of reading this, I'll allow you to sort of process it for a moment. The holy grail, it says, is virality. We all want that virality. We want that, that red heart clicked as often as possible. But as we've indicated before, virality is not necessarily going to feed us. It's not going to give us viability. This is a long-term game. And the linchpin to the long-term gain is this idea of connection, those three levels of connection, place, people and potentially to ourselves. And it's this idea of deepening and enduring and going after those elements of meaning, happiness, and purpose. This particular quote came out in the Harvard Business Review and it really applies to anywhere in life and to any business, but it just so happens at this moment in time, as our consumers begin to change and demand more and are becoming more sophisticated, that this is more important. Travel has always been a terrific platform. In fact, perhaps one of the greatest platforms for personal transformation. What we're suggesting today is maybe to think about a little bit differently and to change the way that we market and interact with our customers so that it's also a platform for changing our businesses. Thanks so much for listening. Thank you. <laughs> I'm afraid we don't have time for questions, we but out? we will be around. So, thanks. <laughs>